Okay, I am back in the park. This is Castlebury Park. It's one of the biggest parks in England. It's certainly the biggest parks in Hertfordshire. We're about 20 miles from London. And I'm here for mantra and meditation in the park. And this is a Hare Krishna event. I've filmed the Hare Krishnas before at their manor. And uh, this time they're at the bandstand. Now that is the same place where I filmed Praise in the Park, which is an evangelical event, happens yearly. I spoke to evangelicals. This time I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to speak to <laughs> Hare Krishnas, if I can stop them from chanting and meditating. I really don't know what uh, to expect or what they're going to say, but uh, it'll certainly be different. <laughs> Okay, so uh, this is the uh, mantra and meditation in the park. So your name is? My name is Sakshi Gopal. Okay, yes. and uh, so uh, I, have you been a Krishna all your life or I'm assuming probably not? No, no. Uh, I was born in 49. Uh, I met the devotees in 72 and uh, I joined the Hare Krishna movement in 1972. Okay, and so obviously um, you've been to the manor there, the Bhakti, Bhakti I can never pronounce it probably, Bhakti Devanta, Vedanta. Bhakti Vedanta. Vedanta, manor. yes, which uh, of course I went there during the uh, incorporation day for the 50th, which was, a, oh. which was a great day. I did some filming there then. Uh, so I spoke to a couple of people then. So this is to do with the, uh, is it the, co the Veda College, College of the Vedas, is that right? There's a Vedic College, uh, Vedic Vedic College of Studi Studies, yes, there's a, that's an ancillary thing. Yeah. The overall umbrella is the International Society for Krishna Consciousness. Okay. Then. And that was brought to the West, or the mission was brought to the West by Bhaktivedanta Swami. Right. Uh, in the mid-60s, and he uh, created an international uh, uh, institution called ISKCON, International Society for Krishna Consciousness. That's his picture there. I'm sure you can get a few pictures during the course of the... Yeah, that's afternoon. Prabhupada. That's Prabhupada. Yes. yes. Srila Prabhupada. His full name is, is Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. And some people would be interested in uh, knowing that the manor was actually devote, um, was actually uh, given to you by one of the Beatles. Is that right? Yes, it was. By George, George Harrison. Harrison. Yes, it was a gift from him. He bought it especially for his devotee friends. Yes. Because by the early 70s, George met the devotees in the uh, late... Uh, 60s, although it's interestingly enough, uh, he first came across uh, the Hare Krishna chant uh, on a record that uh, Srila Prabhupada recorded in New York in 1966, ah. 67. And uh, this went out to all the you know, hippie shops, the head shops. A lot of people were buying it, and George got. Uh, a few copies and he played it constantly and that's when he first heard the chanting. Yeah. And him and John used to chant a lot. And I seem to remember in, this, in uh, this the book. Yellow Submarine uh, animated film there's a when they first encounter him in the house he's listening to some like Hindu music, Hindu chants. Yes, he's, there's, uh, it's a very stunning image that. It is. There's uh, some oxen plowing. Yes. And they got a, the sound of sitar and George's hair is kind of flowing in the wind. Yes. It's very, very impressive. That's a very touching. Because this is mid-60s when people were getting interested in Indian culture. Yes. Now it's really taken off. Vegetarianism, yoga, the idea of karma, reincarnation. Uh, so this, the Hare Krishna movement has been teaching this since the mid-60s when it was just being taken up by the West. So in a sense, uh, Prabhupada is a pioneer in many ways, uh, uh, giving people this, this, the ancient science of self-realization. So can you tell us how you um, started off, obviously you, you weren't a Krishna, but then you became one. So what is it that you were searching for perhaps? What made you decide, uh, this this works for me? Oh, well, I was an art student, got up to all the things that art students do. Uh, and uh, I became vegetarian. I, I thought there's more to life than then generally is, you know, meets the eye. There's something deeper going on. And I, I got serious about it. And finally I just realized I needed to find a teacher. I wasn't finding it in books. And I hadn't met any of the books by Bhaktivedanta Swami. So I went looking for a teacher, for a guru. And within a couple of weeks I met Hare Krishna devotees. I thought, I'll give this a try. 
I was already, already vegetarian. I used to chant Hare Krishna a little bit, just the mantra, and hearing from the record. Uh, and that was it. Next day I moved to the temple. Ah. Right, so you definitely found that something about it worked for you. I mean, was it, did you, would you say that it was something which, which happened quickly or it took you a while? Were you, were you a little bit skeptical at any point? No, I was open. Like I said already, I'd already, I believed in reincarnation already. Yeah. Uh, I, was, I became a vegetarian already. Uh, the idea of karma wasn't foreign to me, as many people in the 60s. Uh, but here was a practical way to apply it. It wasn't just here. Okay. Or talking about it, here I could actually apply it on a day-to-day, hour-by-hour basis. Could you give an example of that, how, that, how this can be applied? Well, living in a, well, I'm, I'm, in terms of myself, I, I made, moved to live in a temple uh, where the program was to preach Krishna consciousness and practice it, like, you know, chanting on beads, you chant on a Hare Krishna, on a prayer beads. Uh, living in, I mean, if you have an interest in something, whatever it happens to be, yeah. a lot of people join a club or hang out with people with the same interests. Yes. So if you're serious about self-realization, if you're serious about awa- awakening a God consciousness, it's good to live in a, with people who've got the same goals. Hmm. Same did, anything. Did people in your family say, I don't understand this, you know, you should think it through? Did they were, did you meet up with some skepticism? And how did you deal with well, it? Well, I turned up back at the family home after having shaved my head and with orange robes. So my mother was a bit hysterical, uh, but uh, they, Within a couple of years, they came around saying, "This isn't some crazy cult. This is a genuine article." Yeah, there and are people who say that, though. Yes, the people say all sorts of things about many things. My mother now has become a vegetarian, mm. and she's 94. Wow. She became a vegetarian after 90. Yeah. So it's never too late. Never too late. Never, to, never too late to change uh, the passions of our life. It's never too late to take up even vegetarianism. Never too late to take up God consciousness. Mm. But Shri Prabhupada was very specific. When he, was, when he called his society the International Society for Krishna Consciousness, uh, some of the devotees, he had a, a small gathering, New York, just one little center, New York, just a dozen or more. Because he traveled to the States on his own, didn't he? Yes, he did. Yeah. Yes, yes, yeah. Uh, they said, well, why not the International Society for God Consciousness? Brothers said, no. Well, God is common to all religions. Yes, same God. Whether we call God uh, Yahweh or Adonai, or Allah, or Krishna, God has millions of names. So you believe like Christians and Muslims, Hindus, all actually are worshipping the same God? The same Lord. There's one Supreme Lord. No? Whatever name we address him by, there's only one sun in the sky. It's just gone in behind the cloud now. One sun, one similar, that one Supreme Father of everything and everyone. And different cultures have different, slightly different ways of approaching and the different messengers of God come and, and they preach according to time and circumstance what people can handle. So yes. there's sometimes differences in the teachings of the messengers, but sometimes even God himself sometimes comes. So, so 5,000 years ago, Krishna himself appeared on the yep. planet, spoke Bhagavad Gita, performed amazing pastimes for 125 years, and that's all documented in the translations of Bhaktivedanta Swami from the 5,000-year-old Sanskrit writings. It's the oldest polytheistic religion on earth it, it that we know of. It isn't polytheistic. It isn't? It is not polytheistic. No. So when I think of Hindu, is Hinduism, yes. um, I think of all the various gods, Ganesha and all that. Yes. They're demigods. Demigods. In Christianity, you'd say they're angels. Okay. Even in Christianity, you have many different designations of angel. Cherubim, seraphim, uh, the powers. In other words, they're servants of God within the material realms. So it is monotheistic. This is monotheistic. In fact, Vaishnavism, Krishna consciousness, is closer to Christianity which is monotheistic, uh, yeah. than many aspects of Hinduism. Oh, okay. not, we don't, Hare Krishna, we don't call ourselves Hindu, because Hinduism is a big umbrella. Yeah. It includes polytheism. But if you go to the original Sanskrit writings, it's a monotheistic culture. So the original God and then the aspects of God. Well, they're not even aspects of God, they're servants of God. Servants of God. Here we are in Watford okay. Park, right? Yeah. There's park keepers. Yeah? Okay. And there's the police, and then there's the local council, and the head council, and the, the, the mayor. And you're going up the higher until you get to the prime minister. Okay. All different levels of administration. So it's the same with the universe. All the different levels. But beyond it all, in control of it all, is the Supreme Lord.
Premate Bhakti Vedanta Swaminiti Namine Namaha Hi there, so you are here at the uh, Mantra Meditation in the Park, and your name is? My name is Hema. Okay, and have you been in the Krishna Consciousness your whole life? No, well, I've known Krishna for a long time, but yeah. Krishna Consciousness has been the past 12 years. The past 12 years, so what happened, what was, what was your life like before that? I was always spiritual, but um, Srila Prabhupada's books have helped me to understand my belief much better. Now Prabhupada, now he is he the, man, founder, the, the founder, the guru who started all of the Hare Krishna movements. He is. Okay, since 1960s I believe, since wasn't it? Yeah. And okay. he's produced some amazing books that um, explain to you the basis of belief and spirituality. Okay, so can you tell us um, when you first discovered Krishna consciousness, what sort of person had you been and what sort of person did you, would you say that you became? Very much into rituals at the time, yeah. Hindu rituals. Yeah. And without understanding much, I, I sort of followed what my mom did, just sort of blindfoldedly. But having joined Krishna consciousness has made it more rational. There's more rational to why I'm doing what. Yes. And um, I didn't have the mantra before. And uh, since I've joined Krishna consciousness, I've now been given the mantra, which I meditate upon every morning for two hours. And what is that for people who don't know? And this is the Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Now, is all this the name of God, or how? Is, what is it exactly? We are calling out to the Lord. Yep. and saying to him to keep us in his service. Okay, so this is something which you do every day and you wake up early and every you chant. Every morning, yeah. Before sunrise, we should have finished 16 rounds. 16 rounds? Which takes two hours. Do you ever get tired of it? No. So it does something for you? Oh, it's amazing. It transforms your whole being. It, it kind of just cleanses your soul. Mm -hmm. Because uh, we believe that um, through this material world, we've been in and out of this world, material world, for centuries, for births and births, millions of years, yes. sometimes and as ant, sometimes as a cow, sometimes as a dog, and now... So reincarnation is part of the Hare Krishna, Absolutely. which comes of course from Hinduism, which comes from the Vedic traditions, yes, before Vedic that. Tradition, right. And so do you study the Vedas, which are the, the most ancient uh, Hindu scripts, I believe? Yes, the Vedas are um, the Bhagavad Gita and the Srimad Bhagavatam are yep. an extract of the Vedas. And what are the Upanishads? Upanishads are the original Vedas, but the Bhagavad Gita Gita offers us, for the age of Kali Yuga, which is what we're living in now, yes. a simple way to understand the message from God. Okay, because I've heard all these things, but it wasn't clear and exactly what they are. But there's a very ancient Sanskrit scripts, which of course have been translated. Yes. Have they changed at all, do you think, over the uh, centuries? Not through the Krishna consciousness. The, okay. uh, Prabhupada tried very hard to keep the message as it is. And that's why his Bhagavad Gita's are called Bhagavad Gita as it is. As it is. Yes, as it, it is. says that in the book, doesn't yes. it? Yes. So does that mean it's the purest form of of yes. the teachings? Definitely. Uh, having read different Bhagavad Gita's, I reckon Srila Prabhupada's books are the most purest ones. And they've kept to the original meaning. Okay, so in a nutshell for you, what would you say that the teachings give everyone that nothing else gives you? If you see what I mean. What does it give you that nothing else does? They give you connection with the Supreme Energy and they give you uh, that connection by understanding what that connection is. Mm. So because we meditate in the morning, that gives us this opportunity to connect with the Supreme Energy and that energy then helps us to cleanse all these uh, horrible habits that we've acquired through the material world. How can you be sure that there is a Supreme Energy? Because some people don't believe in anything. No. So what would you say to them? Um, there's definitely an energy and by mantra meditation, by practicing mantra meditation, you actually experience that energy. Recently I had the nastiest accident you could ever imagine. My car turned round and I have come out of it 
free of a scratch or a whiplash or anything and that energy was there with me. I know that because I could feel it. It's because you've been chanting up until that, that moment. He protected me. If I wasn't in Krishna consciousness, I would not have come out of that accident like the way I did. Ah. Do you think people of other religions, um, my, my friends who I was speaking to over there, they said it's all basically the same God. Do you think that they would also have this kind of protection even though they don't? Meditate? We believe, uh, Srila Prabhupada is very clear that there is one God, whether you are Christian, whether you follow Islam or Judaism, whatever, there is one God, we call him Krishna, they call him Allah, yeah. uh, they call him Jesus, but Jesus says he is the son of God, okay. so he is connected to God somewhere. Now I know in, in some religions, I'm not saying this applies to you, uh, women have a different role to men. Do you find that there is a different role for that perhaps maybe sometimes you find a bit a bit difficult? There is a different role because uh, each gender brings their own strengths and weaknesses. So there is definitely a difference. Yeah. But Srila Prabhupada never discriminated against women and men. And I don't think the Vedas do and I don't think the Bhagavad Gita does. Mm. Um, because they try and treat uh, both genders equally depending on what kind of skills they, they offer. So you don't feel that men are given a priority? No, in that's anything. why in our movement, women are put on the altar to, to look after the, the God. You know, we look after, we serve our God every day. Yes. And women do equally as men. They do the same roles as men do. Okay, well, I think that's really good. So thank you so much indeed thank for you. talking to us. Yeah. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. So you are in the park for the Mantra and Meditation today, and what name do you, do you call yourself? My name is Bar. Okay, and so have you been in the Krishna consciousness your whole life, or did you come into it from a secular world? I came from a secular world. Uh, I live in Israel, actually. I came from Israel. Oh, from Israel. Yeah. Right. And I came for a, a course here in the Manor. Yeah. The Manor is the temple that we have here, close by. Yes, I've been there, yes. And. Uh, yeah, so I've been, only for the last two years, I've been introduced to the Hare Krishna movement. So obviously coming from Israel, you're exposed to Judaism, of course there's the Dome of the Rock, so even, even you know, Islam and uh, Christianity. So what changed? Did you begin as a, as a Jew or a Christian or? Well, uh, I was born as a Jew, I'm still in a way a Jew. Yes. And uh, it doesn't uh, interfere in any way for me because the, the concept of, of the Hare Krishna movement is to love God. If you want to love God, it has different names, it has different forms, but ultimately it's the same. Now I was speaking earlier to your MC and he explained to me that really all the gods uh, that I've spoken of from Christianity, Judaism, uh, Islam, Hinduism are pretty much the same The mm. same God. Do you believe that as well? Yeah, of course. God is one. If God it's not God. one, so it's not God. Okay. <laughs> and so what do you remember the, the moment when you first discovered the Krishna consciousness? And what was it you felt? Why did you feel drawn to it? Hmm. Uh, the first time I went to a class, a Bhagavad Gita class. Yeah. Bhagavad Gita is our uh, literature most prominent literature, yeah. which talks about uh, the uh, conversation between God and his, uh, one of his disciples, yeah. and they're having a nice discussion about life and what is it. So there I had uh, my first lesson, hearing about this philosophy, and right from the beginning I felt something there is, uh, it's something that you cannot, I never had something that fulfilled my heart so much. Well, you say you were searching for something at the time. Yeah. I was searching, I was searching for something spiritual, for, for uh, someone who tell me, who could t tell me, g give me a right view on this world and how to approach it in the right way. Why, why did you feel you needed that? Was there something going on in your life at the moment, some, I felt at that time? What, why was that? I, I was hanging around with my friends, 20 years old, and most w what you do in this uh, time, in the 20 years, so you mainly go to parties, you drink and you search for sense enjoyment. You're, sent, you're searching outside for pleasure. Yeah. And I found it very quickly already in the age of 14, I found that this doesn't interest me so much. It doesn't give me the real pleasure. It gives you something very initial, very... Uh, um, temporary. Tempor thank you. Something temporary. And I felt 
there must be something else. And I started searching and I heard so many people saying so many things and they had it, but they almost had it. So the different religions, obviously you, you were exposed to Christianity. Yeah, I tied uh, Judaism in, in depth, I tied Christianity in depth, I tied... They didn't quite have it. They all have it, but I, I felt with this philosophy, from the first moment I felt it as a whole. That what they're giving me have, have a firm basic, yeah. a philosophy, yeah. and it's whole. Like everything that comes has a full, you know, when someone talks to you, mm -hmm. You can feel right from the beginning if he has basics for what he says. You can feel if he has power okay. in what he's saying. Not only speaking words, but that he has the full experience and from there he's talking. So every word doesn't matter even what he says, it has something meaningful to, for you. you touching the heart. So this is what I felt right from the beginning. And then I got to know the ideas and I got to explore it more and more. And it was more and more. Okay. So what is your like day-to-day -day routine? I know that uh, you, the agriculturists will get up early in the morning. Yes. So can you describe sort of basically what happens from yeah, getting we, up early every morning? So we get up pretty early. We take shower, we clean ourselves, we get fresh. When I say early, this is like four in the morning early, isn't yes. it? Yes. It is. <laughs> it's actually, I, I was searching for it for a long time, you know, and I never had the reason to get up so early. But now I did, to greet the Lord on, on the start of the day. So the main focus in the temple is of course God. So if the main focus is God, is Krishna, then you want to live according to Him. So first thing you do, you, you wake up in the morning, you clean yourself and you go to the temple to greet Him. So it's like a temple service is very early on. Mm -hmm. And then what would happen after that? So we do prayers for yeah. some time and this singing and chanting is very fun all together. Uh, praying in various ways and singing in various ways. And then after this we have a class and then we're eating and then we're starting our day serving. Okay, I'm going to ask you from a, like a secular point of view, from an outsider. Do you ever get um, a little bit bored with all the chanting? Never. Never? See, I feel like I would get bored with it after a try. few weeks. They say the taste is in the pudding. Ah, so if you look from outside, you say all they do is chanting the same mantra every yes. day, all day. That's but this is the say. thing that with material things, this is the right perspective because, for example, eating. Yeah, if you want to eat, how much can you eat? If you want to sleep, how much can you sleep? And this is the most enjoyable thing, right? If you want to have intercourse, how much can you do it? Just for some time, and then even if you want more, you cannot do it more. But transcendental things, things that come from the spiritual world, they have the potency, the ability to do them unstoppably. Uh, are then, they as good as food and sex, do you think, or better? Yeah. Because both of them give you pleasure. One gives you temporary pleasure, the yeah. pleasure, and God, one gives you constant pleasure. And one you can do temporarily, and one you can do constantly, because chanting, why can't you do it? You can do it all the time, right? Yeah. You can never stop and you don't need to pay money, you don't need anyone for it, and you don't need nothing. You just need to sit or stand or dance or whatever you want and chant. Even dreaming you can chant. Okay, that's great. What, what did your family say when you said, I've taken up this new, this new life? What did they say? Well, what did you your know, friends say? There's a few stages. As I went through different stages, they went also with me with stages. Uh, and different people said different things, but mostly my family was very uh, happy with it. Happy in the sense that they saw that it gives me something good for my life, that it makes me happy, that it gives me a regulated life. So they were all, they, they saw what I'm talking, what, what it bro brought with, with it. Do you stay in touch with your family now? Of course, yeah. Is it fairly regular? Have they come to the temple or? No, because I'm living here only temporarily. I actually live in Israel. So there is no reason for them to come. It's like a vacation time. Okay. But in Israel, yeah, we try to, to make the, the gathering all the time. And your friends, um, I, you know, you friends we went to school with, maybe college, um, do they still speak to you or? Yeah. So nothing's really changed? No, many things have changed. But uh, uh, now I know when do I spend time with them and why. Before, this was my friend and I didn't know any other culture. Yeah. So everything that I wanted when I searched for society, for pleasure, for, for people, for love, I had to go to my friends, which is not wrong because they are very nice people and I love them very much. But they did not sup uh, supply the thing that 
is inside the heart, yes. which is spirituality. the God, please engage us in your service and make the peace in all over the world the globe. That is our request to God, so that is what we are praying to God. So, um, how old are you then? I'm 17. 17, and um, you are part of the, uh, the uh, Krishna consciousness, obviously. Have you grown up in it? Yeah, I was born as a, as a Hare Krishna. My mom was, uh, she recently came into Krishna consciousness when I was born, so I was born straight into it. Born into it. Yeah. Right, so you've known nothing else really? No, not really. I've, this, is, this, this has been my life basically. And you, um, you went to school within the, uh, the, the I temple? Went to an outside school. You did, a secular yeah. school? Yeah. Okay, so did they know that you were involved in the uh, Hare Krishna movement? Yeah, because I have uh, my. Uh, of course. Yeah, so they, they, and they knew and they would, question, they would ask and I used to tell them about it. And they, at first it was a bit difficult. Yes. And then they started liking it. They used to ask me questions. You're interested in it. Yeah, they started getting more interest, interested that's, in it. That's that's really cool. So yeah. what, can you explain what the, what that is on your hair? Okay, it's called a shika. Yeah. And it, um, one of the representations, which, is, which I know, is that uh, is what God pulls you back from, and He pulls you back up to Him. This is a representation of God pulling you back to Him. Oh, back to his, is this uh, something that's in the scripture, or something which sort of came out through the? Christian movement. I think I think it's mentioned in the scripture somewhere. I haven't personally seen yeah. it, but yeah. So like the devotees, they told me that they get up early, they have a shower, they have like four in the morning, and then they chant, yeah. and then do some more chanting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Is this what you do? Um, yeah, like it's, like it's not like you have to do it, but my mom and my sister and I, we've we've done it. We've been waking up at three thirty in the morning. Mm. We go to the temple. Um, the Wapna Temple, Hare Krishna Temple. Um, we chant, um, do offer prayers, do some kirtan, kirtan with music over there. And uh, then I also uh, do homework. It's, I have a room there where I do my work, eat breakfast, and then I go to school. Right. So, what do you what do you think of the whole lifestyle in in general? I mean, is it obviously your mother found something in it which which gave her joy? Yeah. You know, but you've grown up in it. Yeah. I, I think it's amazing. I don't, I don't know what I'd do without it. Yeah. It's, the, the the environment the the friends I have the community we're all such a like close community we just it's just we're all really nicely it was all a really nice bond so I, I can't see myself um, out of the community because I just don't know where I'd be to be honest okay you have friends outside as well who are yeah. not in the Krishna consciousness yeah my school friends I have school friends who are yeah not in Krishna consciousness. do they come to the the temple or well they're all Hindus so, so I go to a Hindu faith school so yeah they all okay yeah. Okay, that's, that's great. So, can you see yourself being Hare Krishna the rest of your life? Well, yeah, that's what I'm really hoping. I stay there. That's, yeah. that's what I want. But if, for instance, you decided not to, I mean, what do you think? What do you think your parents would, would say? As in, my mom. She, well, we haven't really talked about, it, but she, she she's always told me that I will always, um, wherever your your decisions are, I will always help you, even if I even if I may not agree, I'll always be there for you. So. Yeah, that's who I stayed with. Okay, great. All right, thank you very much indeed for talking to us. Well, that was the meditation and mantra with the Hare Krishnas in the park. And I think that's the first time they've ever done that. And uh, they certainly want to do it again, I heard them say. Uh, there wasn't a great crowd of onlookers. It wasn't like the uh, Christians in the park that had a fairly big crowd. Um, it was interesting to speak to people who were born into the Krishna consciousness, people who uh, also converted into it. I thought they seemed like the more enthusiastic ones. The ones who were born into it, it just seemed to be, you know, they enjoyed it, but it's kind of par for the course, you know. 
this is a, a normal day out for them. But the question is, are these people happy and do I have a right to say that they can't possibly be happy? But one thing I learned is that the uh, Hare Krishna chant, the Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Rama, all that thing, that uh, mantra, that is considered a formula for happiness. Just chant that every day several times, and as it said on the placard there, your life will be sublime. And uh, I don't think there is a formula for life. I don't think it's as easy as that. And this is the problem with some of these groups which are deemed to be cults. They create a nice, warm, fuzzy bubble around themselves. Everything outside that bubble is evil. Stay away from it. You've got the truth. And you've got the answer to everything. But I don't know if that is the answer to everything. <laughs> However, I did enjoy speaking to them. And I hope to speak to them again one day.